just wanted to say a few words ahead of this video because these videos come off the back of a huge lot of Eagle Moss Star Trek ships that I picked up recently. And so I've put up all the duplicates on eBay for you to have a look at and I'll include links around and around the place. So if you've got any sort of interest in getting hold of a few of these to have a look at them for yourself, um, you can do so for a while at least because it looks like they're not going to go flying off the shelves. I've tried to price them quite reasonably so do please go and have a look and without further ado I will get on with the main video. Cheers. So this is an unusual ship for Star Trek because it has no warp drive and yet it can go faster than light. Yes, I know, this is a strange thing, but as soon as I saw this in the, the job lot, I was very, very intrigued because it's, it's one of those ships I would never have thought to get. It's a one episode ship, but it is a Bajoran Solar Sailor. Now, this is actually a very, very old concept. I can't remember exactly when it was first thought of, but you know, we are experimenting even now with the idea that you might, for example, have a an Earth-based laser which can project itself out beyond the atmosphere, hit a reflective surface attached to a ship, and propel that ship in a similar way that solar winds propel particles of you know of gas and everything else throughout the solar system. Um, so just like a conventional sail, if you can harness that movement and that energy, then you can move yourself without needing propellant on board your ship. Um, now, where this breaks with that concept is that in the episode, um, Cisco has recreated this ship, which is an old ancient Bajoran design, which is why it says launch 16th century. Because apparently the Bajorans were, were bouncing around in their own systems using these, using this sort of ship. But also, there are, um, I'll call it an, an anomaly, but there are Tachyon Eddies in the Bajoran system. And if a Tachyon Eddy catches the sails of a solar sailor, then it can actually get boosted up to faster than light speeds because tachyons go faster than light. Um, and that effectively gives it a warp field, even though it doesn't have warp nacelles or um, you know a warp core or anything like that to power the nacelles. So I'm not quite sure how you get you don't get turned into jam going up to warp speed from a, an impulse level start, um, but possibly Cisco added that ability or it was just part of the systems on board the ship naturally just to protect against unusual acceleration. It's possible, I suppose. And it does imply that the Bajorans had a relatively high level of tech centuries ago, well before humans did, which is which is interesting. Um, and apparently the, the designers got wind <laughs> of this ship being needed a few weeks in advance so it gave them a chance to really think about the design both interior and exterior because the interior was a very unique design as well because it was quite sort of Jules Verne I think Zimmerman described it as being um, and so you know it's, it's designed to look like an ancient spaceship albeit a spaceship but an ancient one um, so the design is, is quite sort of antiquarian by human standards, I suppose you, you would say. And it doesn't have any of the sort of niceties, you know, there's, I mean, it's interesting because Chief O'Brien sort of points out to Cisco almost immediately that basically this, there's no way this thing could have done what they claim it could do because it can't store enough on board to, to last for, for more than a few, a couple, you know, a few weeks, because there was a rumor that um, a Bajoran solar sailor had actually managed to get to Cardassia, which is, you know, a couple of light years odd away, which means it would have to go faster than light for the solar sailor to reach it before the people on board it expired from hunger or um, asphyxiation or thirst. Um, but as it turns out, because the tachyon eddies can propel it faster than light, at the end of the episode it appears in, called The Explorers, um, 
it has actually arrived in the Cardassian system, albeit not in great shape, but it has arrived there because that's where it drops out of warp. Um, so all in all, it's, it's, it's probably one of those, the last really sort of science fiction-y sort of episodes. I know it sounds daft for a show set on a space station, but, you know, th there came a point where Deep Space Nine stopped being about Star Trek and started becoming about an interstellar war. Um, you know, and this is one of those episodes where I think it was probably really sort of still in, in its sort of Trek roots, if you like, because it was doing, you know, totally sort of fantastical looking starship powered purely by um, currents in space. And I like that as an idea. It was also a father-son Cisco bonding episode, as it so happens. But fundamentally, you know, it was it was sort of down to this this sort of ship. Um, so you can see here, there's a sort of a, a living capsule, and the bridge up the front here. I love the fact they've win they've labelled the windows as windows. Um, the sprit sail, solar sprit sail, um, jib sail, living capsule there. So you know, it just it, it just gave the the art department and the effects department something to really get their teeth into i think which is nice um and then we have a general sort of info here on, on the bajoran system as a whole which apparently is 14 planets worth which is i guess is not that unusual when you think about our solar system um i wouldn't even care to give a a proper planet count these days because now we have some that aren't planets anymore but anyway um issues uh, so so we've got, you know, little sort of recounts of things, you know, significant events that have happened or nearly happened in the Bajoran system. Obviously, Deep Space Nine itself there and the wormhole. Um, and so these are some of the rather sort of fascinating designs that they came up with as as uh, potential candidates for the, the solar sailors. They were going through their, their sort of development process. And this is one of the areas where... Um, the, these magazines really sort of excel because they, they do sort of do give you a lot of the sort of background detail on, on the design work and so on if, if that's the sort of thing that you're into you know um but i doubt you'd see them anywhere else otherwise unless you've got a sort of a sort of behind the scenes kind of book you know for the series um and you can find those obviously but um i suspect this probably goes into a lot more detail than perhaps even those would so and these, these, this, this is where these, these were actually used in the show because um, Cisco sees the designs in a museum on Bajor, so um, he he kind of sort of takes his designs from them and he actually builds the ship himself because and it, that sounds daft, but um, he does have an engineering background himself because he used to work at Utopia Planitia, which is where Federation starships get developed, and he he also had a hand in designing the Defiant, so he does have hands-on experience and technical experience in designing ships so it's no it's no great surprise that he can he can do that so as i say deep space nine explorers that's the only episode it's in um which the designer was, was saying was a bit of a shame in a sense but then equally it was just as you know it was always intended to be a single episode ship um but a very very unique single episode ship and he was saying that rather than having to reuse something that had been before he was able to do something right from scratch. So it was very, very bespoke, which is relatively unusual. And um, apparently it was recognised as the most imagin imaginative use of a vehicle to travel in space and awarded the Vision of the Future Award by the Space Frontier Foundation in 1995. So there we are. So yeah, it's, um, as I say, not what I would ever have thought to pick up being not a sort of massively mainline ship, but, you know, I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at it. Um... And as you will see, it's, well, I say, as you can see, it's not, you won't be immediately obvious to you, but let me, let me briefly borrow a Norsecan fighter, but that's a standard box size there alongside this one. Um, I completely forgot to turn one of my lights on. That's better. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's quite a big box for this because they've really gone to town on it and try to bring in all of the sort of sails that, that are on it. Um, so I'm, I have watched another video which basically says, beware, this is breaky, but I am going to try and get it set up um, because otherwise it's not much of an, an, an unboxing video, is it? So let me see if I can do this without killing it. Um, 
Even though I'm actually feeling a bit poorly at the moment, this is probably not the best thing to be trying to do last thing at night. But um, I'm going to take the weekend off because I say I'm not feeling great. Um, so I'm not going to do any videos of this nature over, over the weekend, and I'll um, I'll I'll restart probably Sunday evening so you can have one for Monday morning. But so don't get up early <laughs> for on Saturday or Sunday because there won't be any. Um, and, and indeed, I've almost finished now, almost. Now, let me just extract this. I don't make it easy sometimes, especially not for something like this, but I've, in fact, this is sellotaped. Um, that's very unusual. Um, so that's not even really straightforward for me to get into at the, at the bottom. Hang on, let me just do a quick uh, blue Peter and do one I prepared earlier. Right, a short while later, I can now, hopefully, extract that. Now then. Wow, okay, now where do I even pick this up? Here's my next question to myself. Um, I'm assuming that I can just... Okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's fair. So that the structure is metal. Yeah, and that's come away in one piece. That's nice. That's helpful. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you'd be you'd be terrified of this dropping. Um, I mean, it's described in the in in the magazine as being a sort of a, a cross between the, uh, as being a sort of a turtle with gossamer wings, um, which is a nice way to describe it because the wings are inevitably going to be extremely breaky. Um, I mean, there's no other way they could have done it really. I can see why um, they've done it like this, but it must have been a nightmare for people when they actually got this in the post or something. And it's um, there must have been so many that arrived broken. You can just imagine, can't you? It would have been very, very difficult for them to um, to get this from A to B. I think without it um, threatening to destroy itself into the bargain. Now, this I believe. It's supposed to go. Good Lord, how are you even. Okay. Okay. I was possibly quite literally holding my breath there, but there you go. Um, I mean, it's impressive. It's impressive. I think they've got the, the sort of the look of the the solar sail itself is actually really, really impressive. And that's a great sort of display piece on a shelf. I mean, you know, you have people wondering what on earth it is, of course. But it is very, very cleverly done, fair dues to them. So that's it for the um the Bajoran Solar Sailor. Um really, really interesting model that. Um gotta hand it to them because that's that is not an easy thing to have replicated. As a, as a model and as but it is um, you know i've got to hand it to eagle moss it was brave of them to take that one on at all given its size as much as anything else because there was no way that was ever going to fit a sort of standard box size and still have the sort of level of detail that they've gone for because it would have been far too small so kudos to them yeah well, that's a nice one to, to have got in the bag anyway um and as i say i think um next week i'll probably be able to get through the rest of them for you and then um I will have uh, got myself bang up to date, and then I'll um, I've got a few other projects that I have in mind as well at, at, at the moment. But as I say, they're going to take a little bit longer to get to. But hopefully, this bug won't last too long, and I'll uh, I'll rejoin you next week. Cheers for now.